uh, clever tap we've seen kind of an interesting metric if you download the app and you don't transact on the first day even 24 hours we will rarely kind of see that you'll continue using that app so it's really important to get that person engaged in within the first day of downloading um, next is from uh, Forrester August 2016 consumers want simplicity they want consumers uh, consumers are beginning to consolidate their apps um, moments into a handful of mobile apps and platforms to accomplish tasks even more easily. They want to get in, they want to get something done, and they want to get out. This is for our, from our Forrester report, February 2016. More iOS users receive push notifications, but more Android users open them. Almost 90% of iOS app users receive push notifications, while only 83% of Android app users do. The average open rate is 60% and 40% click-through rates. So I'd like to ask Gary, what are the top metrics everybody should track? So the first metric is obviously downloads. I think you need to know, if you set a goal, how many downloads you're expecting and how many actually happen. But I think we're at a stage now that we're beyond the download. And if you're looking at that purely as a metric of success, you're probably not going to succeed. Uh, it's really now about activation, it's about retention, it's about engagement, it's about installs. You spend a lot of time developing a great application. Um, you obviously know who you customer, who you want your customer to be. Then you spend the time actually spending the dollars to get that customer with advertising. So I think it's now a question of what, you're, what are you going to do with that customer? How are you going to keep that customer satisfied? How are you going to keep that customer activated? How are you going to actually get them to do the transactions or interactions that you want them to do? And that comes with a whole different strategy. So there's a launch strategy, and then there's an actual strategy to keep the customers. And that's where, you know, CleverTap, it was by no chance that I discovered them and we became partners because the whole core of their business is you've spent the time to get the users, now actually have the users do, interact, do the things that you want them to do. But I think Everyone has at least the obligation, if they created the application, to spend the time to look at what people are doing within the application. Whether you're the marketing person, or with the CTO, or the CEO, or even the social media person, everybody should spend the time, and if it's a one-person company or a two-person company, but start off your day looking at the analytics. The same way that you would start off your day looking at the weather, look at the analytics, because if you don't, you're missing a big opportunity. So the next point is on mobile engagement facts and how do people discover your app? And uh, maybe we could talk about one particular app after that is a phenomenon everywhere yeah. in, in New York and, and Toronto where you, you don't see people just doing this, but they're doing this. <laughs> Pokemon. <laughs> what are they doing? They're all addicted to Pokemon Go. And yeah. uh, it's, uh, it's pretty crazy how, how successful that is. And maybe you could talk about what is making you know, these types of apps, super successful. Uh, yeah. An interesting metric from Forrester says that 41% of adult smartphone owners, age 16 plus, first learn of an app by speaking to their friends and family, which is, you know, the, the, the best way to learn is uh, from your friends and family, I think. Authentic. And 16% of them learn from a, a, a new app via social networking, websites such as Facebook. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously social is the way to go, but in talking about the Pokemon app, I think that's, a really uh, tipping point because there's been a lot of talk about the app store is dead and you know it's, it's over the trend is over and then Pokemon comes and re-energizes the app store and tells people that you can make money off of a quality application I mean Nintendo was making a million dollars a day just on that application in three countries so obviously the opportunity is huge now not everyone can create Pokemon it's IP and they spend a lot of time thinking about how to do things differently. What was exciting about Pokemon is it's going to push a lot of people into AR, which is new technology. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think you have to combine what your goal is for your application, look at the technology out there, see some of them will incorporate it, some of them won't, and then use the technology accordingly. But all the tools are there, and I think that's what's exciting. If you have a good idea, you know, take the right tools to play with, but then also spend the time to analyze it. And Pokemon, I can guarantee you, they're spending the time to see how often people are using it, where they're going to, what their actions are. 
it's it's a it's a very well oiled machine. So along the same lines, outside of Pokemon Go, let's forget about them for a while. Um, why do certain apps maintain their top ranking? I think it's um, a function of keeping their users happy. I think you have to understand who your users are, what they're looking for, um, keep on putting new content, refreshing that on a regular basis because there's no value to going to something that once you've seen it, nothing changes. You know, why would you come back? Certain apps are inherent that, you know, as we said, the weather, um, you know, financial, travel, even commerce, if you do it properly, as Sunil said, you're always going to have a sale. You're always going to have a new item. But people won't know that unless you let them know about it ahead of time. So I think that we have a lot of information. You know, we have a lot of apps, even though we use a, a, a small amount. But the point is we're inundated with content. So I think you have to be mindful, and I think Sunil talked about this, is how you use that messaging to interact with your user and don't overuse it. Because the last thing that you want is to be spammed, and you can be spammed with, you know, uh, in-app messaging. But, I mean, you can talk to the group here. How many of you are going to be turned off when you've got your, um, you know, I don't know, 250 um, email you know, it used to be on Viagra or, you know, all those crazy, you just totally turn off. So just be mindful and respectful of your user, and then you can actually turn them to a good friend and a good customer. Yeah, there's definitely a threshold where you've crossed the line of spam, and you've yeah. got to be very mindful of that. And I guess we, the next thing is, how do, you, how do you keep those apps at the top ranking? You have to keep spending. You know, it's, it's a tough thing, but you have to keep on spending. Even the top applications like Uber, you still see them advertising. So just because you've reached the top level doesn't mean you stop spending. You're always looking for new users. You're always looking for ways to find users in different countries, in different, you know, situations, better quality users, lower, less expensive users. But I think the end of the day is you have to keep the content fresh, you have to engage with your users, and you have to keep on spending a bit of money. When you say spending, you know, for across the board, what kind of a budget do you have to have to, to be successful? That's a, you're opening up a can of worms, <laughs> right? So it's a very dangerous thing. I mean, we have a lot of people come to us all the time and say, you know, I want to be successful. And then you try to quantify what does success mean for them. They can't put a number to it. Right. So... It's very interesting, you know, we've got clients from all over the world who say, you know, um, I want to be in the top 10, I want to be, you know, I want to have 200,000 downloads. And then my answer to them is, why do you want to have 200,000 downloads? What is it going to mean to you? And then when you understand the cost, do you actually have the cost to achieve 200,000 downloads? Because, you know, it can be very rewarding and it can also be very dangerous. It's kind of like an addiction. You know, if you're going after users and you're not going after the right kind of users, you could fall in a very deep trap. And, you know, if you don't spend the time looking at the data behind the users you acquired, you can spend, you know, a dollar, two dollars, whatever the amount is, and that user, you know, a day later, two days later, is gone. So I think it's a question of, you know, trying to set your goal, um, really understanding who your audience is, I know this is going to sound really crazy, but developing a quality app. There are way too many apps in the store that don't function properly. And that's working with quality companies like Kundan. You have to really test your application and spend the time to make sure it works. People are always in a rush to get it into the store. I'll tell you, I can't say the name, but it's a very well-known client in the States. They have the top brand for kids. They never looked at their app. They were in their mindset that we're top, we can do number one. They had a three-star rating. And then it came to me and said, well, we want to increase our you know, numbers, we want to increase our engagement. And my first thing is, did you look at your reviews? Because you can give me $100,000, you can give me $200,000. Guess what's going to happen? You're going to get more negative reviews. So why don't you fix your app first before you spend your money? Right. Which is a great transition to, you know, what does social media mean? A lot, almost all of our decisions now are made based on, you know, what other people think and 
how they've reviewed it influences us. How important is social media to maintain your top ranking? I think social media is probably one of the, if not the most important way to maintain your ranking. Is It's people communicating with you. It's people, your audience or audience that you're trying to acquire, telling you what they like and what they don't like. And if you don't spend the time watching your social media and also responding to your social media because people ask questions. You know, in the App Store, it's a one-way conversation, at least for Apple. You write a negative review, it's done. In the Google Play Store, at least, you can respond back to them and say, okay, you know, we're fixing this or we're doing something. But in social media, you have the power to turn a negative into a positive. Sure. So, I mean, social media is like if you had a family of, you know, billions of people. So you wouldn't treat your family, maybe you would treat your family like that, but you wouldn't, you, would, you shouldn't treat your family like that. Listen and, and respond. Great. And the um, next question is, how important is paid media? That's an ugly question, but it's very important. You know, you can't build just on organic. And yes, everyone's going to go back to Pokemon, but um, the reality is Pokemon had IP. And they did do um, a little bit of promotion. And, you know, eventually they'll start to do paid media. But you need to have something to start your fire. And, I mean, Jed would know this for sure from his business. You know, paid media really becomes a key part of your mobile marketing strategy. And if you don't put that element in, you don't have a foundation, you know, you can use PR, you can use social, you can use ASO, App Store Optimization. But at the end of the day, you need to have paid as a foundation to build on. Sure. The next question, I mean, Kundan and Sunil have covered this, um, you know, but not in the, in the form of maintaining your top ranking. How important is analytics? Um, you know, if you don't have analytics, this is my controversy, you shouldn't be in the store. <laughs> you shouldn't have an application. Because, you know, um, it's become too important, unless it's a hobby. You know, even as a hobby, you still want to know the feedback. So I think if you're in business, we sort of say the app is a business. And that's why you get insurance. That's why you have a lawyer. That's why you have an accountant. Those are the elements of running a business. Um, and the analytics is another one of those elements. Sure. And it's a broad question. You can really drill down into each segment of the analytics. Yeah, so you're the, new, you're the new lawyer, accountant, <laughs> financial guru, all put into one. Yeah. Absolutely. And so, you know, I think it's the last and final question is, you know, what Canadian apps are doing it right? We've heard from Jed, you know, and, and uh, from uh, Kundan and, and Stephen. Stephen at the Globe and Mail, I think, might be interesting to bring back. Which Canadian apps are doing it right? Stephen, come on up, if you don't mind. Because he's doing it right, actually. <laughs> you know, he's doing a really good job. Um, and even though he doesn't show in the rankings, you can put the next slide up, which is, you know, that's just the reality. That's the App Store snapshot of the Canadian App Store of the top free apps. And you can see there's three right now. I know it's a little bit fuzzy, but it's the weather, WestJet, and TD. But it's based on the context. I mean, obviously, you're never going to outpace, you know, Instagram or Facebook or Snapchat. But there's three. Yeah, and Cineplex, you know, everybody that Cineplex, watch movie. Yeah, movies as well within the Canadian store, or within the Canadian store. But Stephen's doing it right because he listens to his customer. He sends a welcome package. He has a person doing retention. He does everything that I didn't even know that he did, but now I do. Uh, if there's a mistake, he goes in and talks to them or writes to them. That's really what I would call smart business. And... Uh, I've even kudos. actually done one house call. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, kudos to, but you know. I've gone to someone's house. They had a problem. They were frustrated. I actually went to their house, and awesome. then I uh, fixed their app issue. And then it was a, an older person. He said, oh, can you look at my computer, too? Can you know it? Yeah, I was there for a couple of hours. But, you know, um, the, so the, the talking about social media, if you do something like that or the personal touch, then... You know, some of those people will post it on, on Twitter or Facebook, Instagram, mm -hmm. that someone actually communicated yeah. with them or, you know, you don't have to go to someone's house. But I'm just saying that the personal touch helps. And uh, But the analytics are all the stuff about analytics is key. I can tell it, like, I know that we have it on Globe2Go, we have a 2% churn rate. Um, 
every every month so if you get people um, not using your app don't freak out because it's normal so 2% churn rate over four years you know we would have almost none of our original customers but it's okay I mean that's that's life that's that's how business works but you know with analytics I'll tell you some a nugget that I found that more people more uh, cancellations are occur by invalid credit card or expired credit card information mm -hmm. and people actually calling in to cancel so um, stuff like that I would not have I would have thought I'm getting a couple hundred cancellations a month um, those are people calling in and emailing no there are actually most of those are actually invalid or expired credit card so now we have a retention plan that we're going to roll out to contact people 30 days before their credit card expires on the day of we give them now a seven days grace period when it expires and then we'll contact them after I would not have known that uh, if I didn't dig into the analytics which I have to do a lot of it manually for now I think some some people forget about the key things it's like is it easy to sign up is it easy to pay is it easy to communicate and if you don't get those right you can get a lot of drop-off I think it's also interesting that even in a like a big organization, they saw the value. Sometimes you get lost in a big organization, but I think your organization understood it very well from the beginning. Well, maybe they learned. Maybe share that experience. You learned. Well, yeah. look, everyone, people, sometimes when I go to events, people go, they used to go, is the globe still alive? Are you still going? What's going on? But now, now, but we, you know, we live disruption every day. So we've been through it for, you know, what, two, 20, like 16 years we've been living through disruption every day. So it's normal for us now. If you're in healthcare, banking, you're like, what is going on? FinTech, health tech, every other industry is getting disrupted. So um, what forced us is like all media companies, your advertising revenue is declining because Facebook and Google are taking the lion's share of new digital advertising. So you have to come up with other business models. So we have a B2B business model for some of our products. Um, so that's one thing to consider. If you have a consumer product, can it apply to uh, the corporate market or government market? You might be surprised. Um, but adver declining advertising mm -hmm. revenue has forced us to be, to focus on analytics, to focus on uh, subscription models and to really understand subscription models. And with that comes pricing and retention and engagement. So we're forced into it. Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> yeah, good point. Really good. Um, so I think we're kind of reaching the end here, and I'll open it up to the audience. Uh, thank you guys again for participating. Um, any questions for the panel or in general? Sunil is here, Kundan. Anybody um, you know, have, have something they want to clear up or maybe they want to reiterate? Sure. Yeah, yeah I was just wondering about your experience with uh, uh, how personalized you can make in-app messages and how users react to it um, and if they're getting more used to the idea of them being tracked and that they might have something say hey I saw this in your inbox which or sorry your, um, your shopping cart or whatever yeah you want to take it uh, yeah. so uh, I think there is a lot of uh, it is changing for the better. Yeah. I mean, people, you know, today don't even think twice to like log in with Facebook or you know yeah. Google Plus or whatever. You know, and if you if you really think of being relevant uh, and not spammy, meaning who doesn't want like on the day of the flight like a gate number showing up as a push notification, right? Who doesn't want maybe the credit card transactions going through as a notification, right? So if you you know, I'm a technologist and, you know, we built this technology and I'm so like, you know, anti-spam, but, you know, marketers today use it and it's sort of, I, I cringe when it's not done right. But mm -hmm. I think if you're relevant, I think if you're timely, people like it. It's a way, the real way to think about it is that how can you use messaging to extend the experience of your brand outside of when the user is in it, right? When he or she's in your app, sure, you know, it's working, it's got to have good design and simplicity and all of that good stuff. But if you are relevant with good messaging, it's really your app working. I mean, it's really nothing else. And, and if you're good with it. Are, are you seeing any differences between different uh, segments? I mean, you could generalize uh, yeah. and say older versus younger, but are there other behavioral cues as to who will appreciate those messages versus those who won't? It is certainly younger rather than older who appreciates it. Yeah. But interestingly, we are seeing a big country uh, difference also. I mean, we, we, 
we have a lot of presence in India and in Asia and all of that and in the US and you know even in many countries in the Europe and and like I don't know I joke internally in the company but it's like uh, people look up to the Silicon Valley for technology I think people will look up to Asia if you will for like mobile marketing yeah. I think yeah. it's a context of having you know the mobile phone as your first connected device I think there's just a lot to it but it's just way more open uh, and you know even companies uh, and people to do this kind of stuff uh, the point I'll add is uh, you come back yeah is uh, also in i mean when you are tracking the information right i mean if you are sending certain types of uh, push notifications you can track in the analytics what is working what's not working like are, are is there any churn based on specific types of messaging that you have sent to specific types of target audience in essence right like one of our platforms which is an events platform we what we try to do is we educate our clients that uh, if you are sending a message related to welcoming people to the event just geofence it specifically to one kilometer around your venue, right? Mm -hmm. If if you're sending a welcome message to someone who's still at home and not coming to that event, it's it's not relevant. So the context and the relevance is is very important, especially when you're playing with something like uh, push notifications. Yeah, Stephen, do you have Globe to go? Do you have like alerts or text messages? <coughs> yeah, you can sign up yeah. for alerts <coughs> to get alerts on stores, get alert that your edition is available at you know five in the morning. Is generally it's available. Because like, uh, is it relevant to if it's a news story and you don't read yeah. the paper right away, but you get an alert on the yeah mm -hmm. on the other app, the news app, which is what most people have, uh, we do have breaking news alerts, yeah. and uh, you know, which is and and they're not used a lot. They're used when there's a real big issue. Um, I just want to mention one thing that <clears throat> last summer we hired a person who's dedicated to A/B testing. Mm -hmm. huh? So. Um, it's really important um, and for you to test different test different messaging. Test not just the content of the message. You can you can change your subscription flow. How does that work? Uh, so testing A/B testing is is a big. I mean, you brought mm -hmm. up the A/B testing in your slides, so it's a big part. We have one person dedicated to A/B testing subscription flow, actual messaging. Uh, say mm -hmm. you know uh, the word cheaper versus value mm -hmm. like we'll test that kind of stuff even the word I mean we're a words company but so don't test and and uh, and see what what works and what what doesn't work you'll be you could be surprised and that will give you insight and that gives you more data you know so back to analytics yeah. again I was gonna mention also it, it's really important to understand your user and how they use your app like what times of day even are they using your app we have uh, an edu educational tech app that we're going to announce soon um, that talks about um, they're using their app to, to teach students through iPads. And they knew a specific date when the teachers were finishing their curriculum, what hour they were going to get out of the, um, their offices, send them a message to say, hey, reminder to, you know, to upload your, your uh, grades. Because they knew, and it's convenient for them. If you did that in the morning, they wouldn't react. And sorry, another point to add to that also is uh, if, I mean, from the app development standpoint, if you give them more options to uh, to make sure they, they are subscribing for the right type of push notification, mm -hmm. which is relevant as well. Like, I mean, uh, for Globe and Mail, it's, uh, it's a good uh, example that do you want to subscribe to breaking news or sports or weather or, or something very specific to your location, right? So if you give them more options, the chances that they'll unsubscribe to push notifications as a whole will be much lesser and you'll manage their, their experience of it better. Let me send out, any other questions? Feel free to ask anything. In the back there? Yeah, are you able to uh, assess a behavior on what's going on in their phone um, at the point you want to do a push notification? So like, are they engaging with their phone or are they not using their phone? So, so if you know that they're engaging with their phone, you want to send a push notification? Is there some kind of measurement that... You mean outside of your app? Are they yeah, generally engaging with so the phone? You know they're on the phone. Like uh, my app particularly is a second screen for football game. Mm -hmm. So if I know they're on their app the Thursday night football is about to begin, they might be there's a good chance they're possibly watching them. Yeah. Right. So you've got to happy to chat, you know, with specific use cases. Okay. Any others? Yeah. Well, thank you very much for joining us. We really appreciate it. This will be online after on our uh, social channels, and uh, have a great afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.
get a zoom out six seconds. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks again. Thank you. 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 Thank you.